Okay, then this time I'm going to talk about protocols and ports. Okay, so what's a protocol and what's a port? Well, a protocol, last time you answered the phone, um, can probably be pretty certain that you picked the receiver up, put it to your ear, and said hello. And sometimes if there's nobody there, you'll say hello, 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 until somebody eventually answers or doesn't and you hang up. Okay, and that's a protocol. A protocol is a set of rules that people stick to in order to start things off. Okay, it's not just used to start things off, but in this context it is. Okay, so all protocols aren't to do with starting things off, but here we're talking about specifically things like how to start a conversation off. So when you're talking to a website to get a web page, when you're talking to an email server to get an email, you're using a particular protocol, a predefined set of rules about things like how the conversation starts, which is handshaking, that's how we refer to that and various things to do with the size of packets perhaps and, and all, calls, all sorts of other stuff that are involved in these protocols. And you need to know about some of the common ones. You probably already know about some of the common ones. Um, you will be familiar, I'm sure, with the letters HTTP, okay, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And you'll be familiar with HTTPS, hopefully, which is the secure version of Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And uh, both of these are designed to get web pages to you or to serve web pages from you to other people. Um, the yes being secure um, in that it's encrypted so other people can't read the data. And, and they're quite straightforward. You're familiar with those. We've also got POP3 and SMTP. You might be less familiar with those, but you might have heard of them. Um, POP3 is an email um, protocol and that's for receiving emails so if you've got an online account like a Gmail account a Hotmail account maybe a school based email account and you've also got a program like Outlook, Outlook Express, Thunderbird or Mail that you, you use on your desktop computer to, to read your emails they'll be sent from the web server to your computer using the POP3 protocol they're not sent using a web page um, they're sent using POP3 SMTP is the send mail transfer protocol I can't remember what POP3 stands for. Um, it's probably something really, really useful and interesting, but never mind. But this is definitely the send mail transfer protocol, and that's what you use when you send email. Okay, so this is receiving email. I should probably write some of this down. Although with my handwriting, you probably can't read it. So receiving email, that's a C, honest. And that's for sending email. These two here are for web pages. And another one is FTP, which is for sending files or receiving files. I'll change that and put uh, transferring files because it's both sending and receiving. That stands for the file transfer protocol, FTP, file transfer protocol. Um, and again, the idea is these two things here are web-based. They are they're using the World Wide Web. Now, when I say internet, I bet you think of the World Wide Web, because most people do. They talk about things being on the internet, going on the internet to find information, that kind of thing. But there was a time before the World Wide Web. The early 90s, there really wasn't a World Wide Web. There were no web pages. There was no hypertext. There was no HTML. There were no animated banners or GIFs of men with shovels showing that the site wasn't finished yet, things like that. They just didn't exist. Um, and everything was done without this nice graphical user interface. And so POP3 and SMTP could be used to send and receive email from your server, and still are. FTP could be used to transfer files to and from a server, and it still is. And then the other one, um, which, if it is an acronym, I don't know what it stands for, and it doesn't really matter, but it's Telnet. Okay, and Telnet um, allows you to control a server. Now what I mean by that is, if you're on Windows, um, and you go start run CMD, you'll get a command prompt. On a Mac, if you open Terminal, you'll get a command prompt. Um, some of you may be familiar with the, with the concept of the kind of a black screen with white writing and writing command prompts. Things like um, CD to change directory, DIR to get directory listing, or LS if you're, uh, if you're on Linux or Unix to get a listing of a directory, things like that. You can control a computer, and in many ways it's quicker to control a computer using the command line, and you can do that on your computer quite easily. Um, what you can also do with Telnet is you can connect to a server remotely, and you can, you can have a command prompt on that computer. So you can log into to a web server, you can log into any kind of server you like, um, and you can control it, create files, move files, do all kinds of things, renaming things, 
remotely um, just at the command line using Telnet. So it's your command line taking over its command line, the service command line over the internet. Um, it'd be really great to show you a demonstration. It's quite hard with a whiteboard and a pen and nothing else. It'd take a long time to draw it. Um, but if you understand how a command line works, then Telnet is just getting a command line on another computer. And all of these things here are doing it without the nice GUI that you get on the internet. Obviously, you've got, you can have a mail program like Outlook or Thunderbird that, that renders things and makes things look very pretty and nice for your email. Um, equally, FTP programs can have a nice GUI so you can drag and drop files, things like that. But the actual protocols themselves are for sending the, the data, sending the ones and zeros across. Um, and the idea is you can use these without the need for a nice GUI. So you can go to gmail.com, you can go to hotmail.com and manage your email through HTTP or HTTPS. But if you've got a mail client, that will be using POP3 or SMTP. Actually, in reality, it's quite likely you might be using IMAP, but you don't need to know about IMAP. Um, so I'm not going to go into that because it'll just confuse things. But IMAP is, is um, a protocol that's used with email nowadays quite a lot, probably slightly more than POP3, I would have thought. Um, but POP3 and SMTP are the ones you need to know. So hopefully you get those six. If you don't get those six, you can always do a bit of research yourself and find out a bit more about them. But that's what they are. You're also expected to know the port numbers, and the port numbers um, allow you to tell the computer what kind of communication you're talking about. Okay, so if I go to a website, um, then typically what I'm actually doing, if say the IP address um, was 172.16.32.6, by default I would probably, actually, I'll just make a bit more room, be talking to 172.16.32.6 port 80. And what that will do is that will tell the computer that I'm talking on port 80, okay, and there can be potentially thousands of ports listening, thousands of ports open, or they can be closed. Um, and it tells the computer what kind of response it should be looking for um, and what kind of response it should be giving. So when you go to a website, when you go to google.com, you're actually going to google.com port 80, almost certainly. Um, HTTPS runs on port 443. Um, I'll be honest, I sort of struggle to remember all these. I'm pretty sure that SMTP is port 25, but I'll go check. And if I'm wrong, I'll just cross over the box and, and do a voiceover. Um, FTP is, I think, port 21. Uh, Telnet, I think, 23. And POP3 escapes me for now, but I'll write it in there later. I'll be honest, I find it really hard to remember the port numbers. I find it really, really hard. Um, but you do have to learn them. Clearly, I haven't, you know, for this. Um, I did know, I have known them for several years, but I keep forgetting them. But like I said, I'll go through after this video is recorded, and I'll, I'll redub this bit and, and copy over it, so you'll be able to see what they are. Um, but you must learn these six port numbers. You must learn them. Um, and like I said, what, the, what that means is that you're getting a particular response. So what you could do, here's something you can try. Um, go to uh, a command prompt. Get a command prompt on your computer. Okay. When you get a command prompt, type in the following command, all in lowercase. I'll write it in uppercase because my handwriting is awful. But you write it in lowercase. Okay. So I want you to type in telnet and then the name of the server. So it could be www.google dot com and leave a space and then do 80 and what that will do is it will start a command prompt conversation okay so tell that remember is for getting into a server and controlling it from the command line so it will start a command line conversation with that web server but it will go through port 80 and port 80 remember is expecting to get web traffic Okay. And so what we should get is we should get a web traffic response. What kind of web traffic response? We should get a HTML page. We should get a HTML page in response. So if you type it in Telnet space and a web server, any web server, space 80, what you should get is a HTML page back in your command prompt. And of course what you'll get is the tags. HTML, head, body, title, all those kind of things should come back. Okay, again I can't show you. But what you're doing there is you're probing port 80 to see what's what's going on, see if port 80 is open, what kind of response you can get. Um, similarly, you could try with an email server and see what response you get. I'm not sure what response you'll get, but you can give it a go. So these port numbers are for specific types of traffic, 
and these are the protocols hypertext transfer protocol secure hypertext transfer protocol pop3 for email receiving send mail transfer protocol for email sending file transfer protocol for transferring files and telnet is for controlling a server at the command line as though you were sat there with a command prompt yourself okay so make sure you're familiar with those protocols make sure you're familiar with the correct port numbers and if you want to have a go and investigate a bit more, have a look and try going to a command prompt and telnetting into servers on different IP addresses.